learners, by now you might have understood the role of government in providing needed financial reliefs to the poor, the young, widow, senior citizens, women, workers, organized sector workers and Manrega workers etc. in time of COVID-19 pandemic. Learners, government played an important role in reviving the economy when there was no economic activity during more than two months lockdown. As you know, apart from the firms and the government, there is another major sector in an economy which is called household sector. Learners, by a household, we mean a single individual who takes decisions relating to her own consumption or a group of individuals for whom decisions relating to consumption are jointly determined. Households also save and pay taxes. How do they get money for these activities? Learners, you know that the households consist of people. These people work in firms as workers and earn wages. They are the one who work in the government departments and earn salaries or they are the owners of the firms and earn profits. Indeed, the market in which the firms sell their products could not have been functioning without the demand coming from the households. Moreover, they can also earn rent by leasing land or earn interest by lending capital. Learners, we studied three important sectors of the economy that is firms, government and household. As you know, all the countries of the world are engaged in external trade. Trade with the external sector can be of two kinds. One, the domestic country may sell goods to the rest of the world. These are called exports. Two, the economy may also buy goods from the rest of the world. These are called imports. Besides exports and imports, the rest of the world affects the domestic economy in other ways as well. Capital from foreign countries may flow into the domestic country or the domestic country may be exporting capital to foreign countries. Learners, you can see in the diagram and understand the circular flow of functioning of simple economy which is facilitated through the market. You see, it enables us to have a rough idea of how a simple economy without a government, external trade or any savings may function. In this simplified economy, there is only one way in which the households may dispose of their earnings by spending their entire income on the goods and services produced by the domestic firms. Learners, the other channels of disposing their income are closed. It is assumed that the households do not save. They do not pay taxes to the government since there is no government and neither do they buy imported goods since there is no external trade in this simple economy. Learners, in the diagram, the uppermost arrow going from the households to the farms represents the spending the households undertake to buy goods and services produced by the firms. The second arrow going from the firms to the households is the counterpart of the arrow above. Learners, it stands for the goods and services which are flowing from the firms to the households. In other words, this flow is what the households are getting from the firms for which they are making the expenditures. Learners, 
In short, the two arrows on the top represent the goods and services market. The arrow above represents the flow of payments for the goods and services. The arrow below represents the flow of goods and services. Learners, the two arrows at the bottom of the diagram similarly represent the factors of production market. The lowermost arrow going from the households to the firms symbolizes the services that the households are rendering to the firms. Using these services, the firms are manufacturing the output. The arrow above going from the firms to the households represents the payments made by the firms to the households for the services provided by the letter. Learners, the households receive their payments from the firms for productive activities they perform for the letter. We see the firms demand for factors of production to run the production process creates payments to the public. In turn, the public's demand for goods and services creates payments to the firms and enables the sale of products they produce. Learners, the process of production in an economy generates factor payments for those involved in production and generates goods and services as the outcome of the production process. Learners, the incomes so generated create the capacity to purchase the final consumption goods and thus enable their sale by the business enterprises, the basic object of their production. The capital goods which are also generated in the production process also enable their producers to earn income, wages, profits etc. in a similar manner. The capital goods add to or maintain the capital stock of an economy and thus make production of other commodities possible. Learners, there may be four kinds of contributions that can be made during the production of goods and services. A. Contribution made by human labor, remuneration for which is called wage. B. Contribution made by capital, remuneration for which is called interest. C. Contribution made by entrepreneurship, remuneration of which is profit. D. Contribution made by fixed natural resources called land, remuneration for which is called rent. Learners, factors of production use their remunerations to buy the goods and services which they assisted in producing. The aggregate consumption by the households of the economy is equal to the aggregate expenditure on goods and services produced by the firms in the economy. The entire income of the economy comes back to the producers in the form of sales revenue. There is no leakage from the system. There is no difference between the amount that the firms had distributed in the form of factor payments, which is the sum total of remunerations earned by the four factors of production and the aggregate consumption expenditure that they receive as sales revenue. Learners, in the next period, the firms will once again produce goods and services and pay remunerations to the factors of production. These remunerations will once again be used to buy the goods and services. Hence, year after year, you can imagine the aggregate income of the economy going through the two sectors, firms and households in a circular way. Learners, now you might be able to identify the economic question that concerns all the citizens. That is, in today's context, COVID-19 pandemic is worldwide that has concern with all people using sources available in public domain like government reports and documents, be it national or international. Learners, 
the macroeconomic indicators such as output of goods and services and an unemployment rate are broad economic questions that concern all citizens. You are also be able to understand the importance of output level of goods produced within your economy with the help of real life examples. Learners, finally, you have noted that it may be incorrect to treat GDP, gross domestic product, as an index of the welfare of the country using examples. You might be able to differentiate between microeconomics and macroeconomics, describe the emergence of macroeconomics, discuss important features of a capitalist economy and describe the four major sectors in an economy according to the macroeconomic point of view. Learners, you might have understood by now how macroeconomy works. The macroeconomy that we study in macroeconomics work in a circular way. The firms employ inputs supplied by households and produce goods and services to be sold to households. Households get the remuneration from the firms for the services rendered by them and by goods and services produced by the firms. Details about functioning of economy and estimation of national income you will learn in next lecture.